Let's now learn how your lab environment is configured. If you are running these labs as part of an AWS sponsored event, you may have already got an AWS account with pre-configured lab environment. As part of this configuration, your instructor has already executed a CloudFormation template that has provisioned certain AWS resources. You need to log in into the correct AWS region. Which region to log in is already given in your account hand in our email. And once you log in, in you can see that uh, there's a VPC already provisioned for you called DevOps VPC. And as part of the initial lab configuration, we have already set up two subnets, uh, two public subnets. And also the routing is configured in a way that uh, route traffic to the internet. As part of a lab participant, you are going to run another CloudFormation template that will kickstart three EC2 instances. One is called a Dew machine. So this is a development machine that you will use to code and create your pipelines. It has tools like VS Code, Azure Dew Observer Express Edition, SQL Server Express, and Notepad++. In normal environment, you will very likely run your Azure DevOps in a Azure hosted manner or in another complete different server. But to keep things simple, I have already installed Azure Dew Observer on this Dew machine. There's a build machine which runs a Windows operating system. It also has tools like Azure uh, DevOps Agent, .NET Core SDK, AWS CLI, AWS Tools for PowerShell, and some other tools like Lambda Lambda Tools. Build machines contains Azure DevOps Agent. So when your pipelines are running, they will run on these build machines. Build Machine Linux is used to build Linux related uh, software artifacts. It also has tools like .NET Core SDK, Azure DevOps Agent, AWS CLI, and Docker. You cannot build Linux containers on Windows machine. And that's why we have this Build Machine Linux to build some Linux based containers in our pipelines. It is important to note the IP address of this Dew machine. To keep the environment simple, we have not used a DNS server. So this IP address of the Dew machine is configured as 10.0.1.20. And the two build machines are hard coded with this IP address so that they can communicate with this Dew machine. All these things are already configured in your CloudFormation template. So it will make easy for you to start these instances. Let's now go to our AWS environment and then start this cloud formation template so that we can start these three EC2 instances. I'm in my AWS console. Make sure that you are logging into the correct AWS region. If you're logging into the wrong region, you may not have access to certain AWS services. Let's go into the cloud formation section and then inspect the cloud formation that the instructor has already provisioned. These cloud formation have provisioned certain AWS resources like some security groups, VPCs, and policies to name a few. Let's go there and then create a new stack. So if you go into your stacks and then create a new stack, standard resources, uh, select template is ready and point into an Amazon S3 URL. The location of the URL is given in your lab document. So in this case, the name of that template is called my start. So let's go to the next step. Give it a name. So let's call it my start. The size of the instances, uh, you can use these default values. You need to point the lab setup main stack name to point into the main stack. So usually this default value will work. So this lab setup main points into the lab setup main uh, template that we have already executed. You can find that uh, this lab setup main template already outputs certain parameters like subnets, VPCs, some security groups that we will use when we run this my start template so that the instance can instances can start on the correct subnets. Go to the next step. 
all looks good click next they all looks good and then click create stack this will start the ec2 instances so as of now it has started the three instances give it some time and you will see the instances come in alive if you now go into ec2 section of your console you will find some ec2 instance already running so you have a do machine a build machine and a build machine linux status at the moment are in initialization state so wait until they turn green if you select uh, any of these machine, for example, let's say we select a due machine, you can find that we have already configured the security groups, the subnets and the IAM role in which these machines are running. So for example, the security rules of this due machine allows RDP access from the internet and the IAM role has certain permissions already granted. So here you can find that it already has a few uh, permissions already attached into that. So that includes Amazon SSM management integrated uh, instance score, Amazon EC2 role for SSMS and some other uh, policies that we have attached into this. So over time during the labs, you are going to change these permissions so that we can run different uh, configuration on these instances. You already have these um, two uh, permissions attached, which means that we can use a, a system manager to log in into these instances. So go here, select due machine, connect. I'm going to start a standard RDP client, download the remote desktop client, open it, and you will find something like this. So you need to change the uh, user. We are not going to connect as administrator. We are going to connect as a different user. For the development machine, it's going to be due user. And the password is the password that you used. In this case, this is the password we used. So let's type that. So when you type that, you can type it like this with a dot forward slash, so dot backslash, and then due user. Click remember me and then connect. Accept the certificate. So this has uh, certain tools already installed. As I said before, if you start uh, the browser, you will find uh, it has Azure DevOps uh, Express Edition already installed. So if you go into uh, this link and or type dew uh, forward slash default collection, so this will take you into the local Azure DevOps server that is already been installed. Because this is running in a normal environment, uh, give it some time to start the Azure DevOps server. It needs to start the SQL Server Express Edition and then start it. It will take a few minutes, but once it starts, uh, the rest of the execution is uh, quite fast. We have our Azure DevOps server, the front page loaded. You will go there and then explore these uh, configurations later. If you go into the collection settings and then select agent pools, you should find that under AWS build pool, your AWS built agent one is online. So this points into the Windows built agent. And if you select AWS build pool Linux, you'll find another agent called AWS built agent Linux is online. So make sure that they are all green so that when you run your pipelines, it can use these built agents. Connect, start the RDP client, open it, connect. You need to use uh, the special user called build user. Type the password. accept the certificate. Now you can log in into this. So I'm running this uh, built agent. Uh, if you go into the machine and uh, start the uh, instance, you will find that the Azure DevOps agent is already on installed on this machine under C built agent. So here you find the VSTS agent already installed. You want to make sure that these agents are working fine. 
Uh, to do that, uh, you can run a test pipeline. Logging into the Linux machine, you don't need to RDP into that. Uh, you can always uh, go into the session. If you want to execute any commands on the build Linux machine, you can directly connect into this and then start a session manager. So this is a Ubuntu machine without any graphic user interface. So you can run any uh, shell commands from this. So for example, who am I? You can find that uh, this is running as a SSM user. So you now know how to connect into these machines. We'll now go there and then execute some tests on this new machine. 